It happens to all of us. Injury, sickness, or a lack of motivation, there will come a time where we stop working out. This detraining phase can be a rough patch considering that you might lose all of your hard-earned results. Fortunately, it doesn't happen immediately and can be avoided with the right approach. So how long exactly can you go without exercise? It first depends on the fitness type. Cardiovascular fitness tends to drop off first with parameters such as stroke volume, work capacity, and cardiac output, all appreciably dipping just after 10 to 12 days of inactivity. VO2 max, one of the core measurements of cardiovascular fitness, can drop by as much as 20% in two weeks. Beginners are much more likely to lose everything, where one study found that after eight weeks of detraining, their VO2 max dropped all the way back to baseline. Athletes aren't completely off the hook. Performance can drop by as much as 25% after three weeks, an extremely devastating amount for any top competitor. As for strength, it generally takes three weeks of inactivity before any significant drops take place. Athletes generally can get away with four weeks unless their sport requires high levels of speed, power, and coordination, which dissipates as early as two weeks. Muscle mass falls within the same two to three week window. Some believe early losses aren't actually from muscle, but instead water and glycogen. In fact, glycogen levels do drop by as much as 50% in two weeks. And since glycogen retains water, water in the muscle will drop as well. One study that used more extensive measurement tools found that three weeks of detraining resulted in 0.7 kilograms of lost lean mass, all of which was water. Visually, you might look smaller, but it's probably just less water and glycogen in your muscles, which can easily be reversed. As for the amount of time to lose actual muscle, it's hard to say. To play it safe, we can still go by the two to three week estimate. Age is also a factor, where older individuals can lose muscle mass quicker, but not strength or endurance. Immobilizing injuries will also accelerate atrophy. And worse yet, if you're completely bedridden from illness, studies show it only takes one week before everything goes bad, even insulin sensitivity. As far as why this all happens, we don't truly know. The best guess is that the body only intends to keep as much muscle as necessary since maintaining muscle is energy costly. In short, you either use it or lose it. So that's one to two weeks for cardio and two to three weeks for strength and muscle. If you're taking longer breaks, you do have a couple of options. The first is exercising less. You can retain fitness by doing as little as a third of what you did before. Instead of an hour workout, do 20 minutes. Instead of three to five days, do one or two. Intensity should stay the same though, so keep lifting the same weight or running the same speed. You can also try different workouts, such as swimming instead of running. For limb injuries, working out only the good side magically can benefit the injured side thanks to crossover neural adaptations. If none of these options work for you, then don't freak out just yet. Fortunately, it's a lot easier to regain lost muscle and strength thanks to muscle memory. One part of muscle memory is skill retention. Just as you will always know how to ride a bike, you will still know how to do a certain workout efficiently. The other part is increased myonuclei within the muscle from your initial training. Once you develop additional myonuclei, which is important for muscle growth and strength, they remain even after long breaks of inactivity. When you retrain, you skip the need to produce myonuclei, fast-tracking growth and strength. And there you have it. Breaks happen, and quite honestly, extra rest can be a good thing, especially if you've been training for a long time. Hopefully, the recovery will motivate you once more to jump back on the gain train.